Amen. Hello. Welcome to Nation Church Houston. We are so glad you're able to today tune in and, and watch online through YouTube. And thank you for coming out. We, we praise the Lord together. Uh, this week, we have prepared a great service for you. So we are glad you tuned in. We miss you guys and we, we love you. We've been praying for you every day. And today, we're going to worship the Lord all together. So if there is anything negative in your mind, if there is anything that is is heavy on your head. I encourage you to put that aside. God been good to you. God been good to me. And today is a time to worship the Lord all together. So put that aside and focus on him. Focus on his throne. Let's praise him. Amen. Let's sing. Amen. Would you stand with us and sing?
Let those who fear the Lord say, His faithful love endures forever. Let's read this one more time. Let's counsel ourselves in the truth of God's word. Read it while you're at home. Read it out loud as families. Let's read this together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his faithful love endures forever. Amen. I don't know where you are today in your heart and your mind, what you're struggling with, the circumstances of your life, the loss, the difficulty, but the Lord knows, and his faithful love endures forever for you and for your family today. So let's worship in light of that. Let's sing to Hosanna, the God who saves. Sing, praise is rising. Oh, 
Hosanna. You are the power who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come and obey among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, come and your way among Come you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue to worship through a time of prayer. Hello, church family. Before we start our prayer, I'd like to say one little thing. Uh, the importance of coming together and encouraging our one of another to become a better family under, the fa all the, under our Father. It's written in the scriptures where iron sharpens iron and man sharpens man. So this is a time, a point where we're sharpening ourselves and our brothers and sisters in Christ in their time of need or just even encouragement. So together, let's read this verse from 1 John 5, 14. One, two, three. Three. Now this is the confidence we have before him. Whenever we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. One more time, guys. One oh still some confidence we have before him. Whenever we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. So we're, we'll be praying today for three points. First, new discipleship relationships. So let us continue to seek out more people that need to be discipled, need that discipleship fellowship relationship, because that is what God called us to do, to make disciples of all nations. Second, let's pray for new opportunities to share the gospel. So that means your daily activities, just having talks with your neighbors or even people as cashiers or during shops, during grocery hours, just the opportunity and the flame in our hearts to continue the share of the good news. Third, we will pray for my country, El Salvador, where it's just a terrible place right now because of crime rate going higher and higher, but there is still a large portion of it that are believers, so I just want to pray over their safety and their ability to continue to share the gospel to the youth so that tradition won't die from the older people that are just passing away at this time. So we've got to pray Korean style, so we've got to pray in our own native language. So just pray how you want to pray it, and I'll close this after.
Father, you are good to us. Lord, you give us the strength every day to continue our lives to spread the good news, Lord. I pray just for new discipleship relationships, Lord, that you're able to open our hearts to seek out these people that are, are just seeking the knowledge, Lord. They're thirsty for the good news and thirsty for their salvation, Lord, that you just give us the ability to speak and just humble ourselves before them, Lord, as you humbled before us, sending your son down here as just a carpenter, Lord, that we take that application in our lives to seek people out, that we are a fisher of men, Lord. I pray these things, Lord. I also pray for just the ability in my brothers and sisters today that's listening to us through online or even here in church today, Lord, that we're able to take this to heart just to spread the good news, Lord. It just takes about five minutes of our time and day, Lord, just to spread the good news to just one person, Lord. Let that be our goal today, to just spend five minutes of our time every day just to spread the good news to just somebody we don't know, Lord. That we're able to tell them salvation is within our grasp because you're given to us because your son died on the cross. Lord, I also pray for Salvador, Lord, for me, Walita, me, familia that's over there, Lord, that you keep them protected and the peoples that are there, the Salvadorians or your believers, Lord, that you just renew their kindle flame to tell them that your time is coming to us, the perfect time to gather and just pray and just encourage each other, Lord, that they teach the youth that the, the only way to live is your way, your principles and your teachings, Lord. We pray these things in your son's name, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Let's praise him with one voice. You will be 
on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be praised, you will be praised. And sing, we sing, worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised. You will be praised. In angels and saints, we sing, worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised. You will be praised. With angels and saints, we sing, worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised, you will be praised. With angels and saints, we sing, worthy are you, just sung, to praise your name at all times, so that all who are around us see Christ in us, in our words, and our actions, but Lord, first, just for love of you, Father, teach us to praise your name at all times, so that you are truly our first love, our foremost love praising you simply because you are worthy, simply because you are good, and your faithful love endures forever. Lord, we marvel at the truth that we sing with all of heaven, that with angels and saints we sing, worthy are you, Lord. We know that even now in your presence, that the angels before you sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And we join in with them. We join in with them here in this building and in our homes. And we say that you are holy and you are worthy and we love you and we worship you, Father. We worship you through Jesus and the work that he has done so that we can come before you as your children. We praise your holy name. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good afternoon, church body. It's so good to see you. Um, even though I cannot see you, but you can see me. And what's more important is that God sees that you're in his presence. And that brings me joy to see you. Um, this is the time that we're going to worship in tithe and offering. Our church now is meeting online, hybrid. Some of you are here in person. But God is not going to check on our Venmo account whether you are given to him or not. Well, I'm not checking that, but God will see that. What I'm saying is when we come, we give we give to the Lord. And sometimes we will say, how much are we giving? And this is what God is saying to you and to me. Consider from Luke chapter 6. It says, woe to you who are rich. Because you, what you have is already here on earth. And what God is saying is give as if you were God to love your enemies. Don't expect what they will give you in return. God gives mercy to the unrighteous and he will use you to give your gift. Use your gift to give to the unrighteous. This is what it says. When you give, it will give back to you 
three ways, okay, three steps. When he gives to you, you will shake it down, and um, he's going to pat it, press it together, and then it's going to overrun it to your laps. That's what our God is. He gives you back more than what you are giving it to your enemies, to yourself, to, to the Lord. So I want to encourage you to have that faith to be as merciful as your heavenly Father is. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we just want to thank you so much for what you are doing in our lives. Help us not to treasure the things that you've given us more than you who is the one who gives us everything. As we give, help us to be as selfless as you are. There's no more I, me, or mine. Everything that we have is from you and through you and is for you. We thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, church body. Uh, let's read uh, the memorized Bible verse we need to do uh, with Romans chapter 8, 28. So, uh, let's read together uh, Romans chapter 8, 28. Uh, let's begin. Uh, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. One more time. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Church family, our scripture reading for today before Pastor Masood comes up is from Romans chapter 6, verses 15 to 23. You can read along um, silently as I read this for us. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Absolutely not. Don't you know that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that one you obey, either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But thank God that although you used to be slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching you were transferred to. And having been liberated from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. I am using a human analogy because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you offered the parts of yourselves as slaves to moral impurity and to greater and greater lawlessness, so now offer them as slaves to righteousness, which results in sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from allegiance to righteousness. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been liberated from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit, which results in sanctification, and the end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, so great to see everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in again. And thank you for coming out. And today, we're going to continue our study in the book of Roman. So if you have your Bible, please open your Bible to book of Roman. We're going to continue our study in chapter 6. Roman chapter 6. And as you knew, we start this two-week series called the new way, the new way, the new way of how we as a believer live now. Uh, we were once one way, now we are totally different, and how we live in the, with our new identity. Last week we talked about we are dead to sin, right? We are dead to sin, and sin nature is not controlling us anymore, and we are dead to sin. And this week we're going to talk about living by grace, living by grace. 
Romans chapter 6, um, we're going to read from verse 15. Before we start, though, um, have you seen some people use paper maps other than GPS? They take out their p paper map and they give them an address. They're trying to find a place on their paper map. Or have you seen somebody pay for their grocery at the grocery store with a, with a check? They take out their check and write the check. It's so weird, right? Or have you seen uh, somebody, uh, other than paying with a card, they're paying with a, with, a, with a check, other than using their cell phone, they're using still the landline. They're like, who have landline now? Who is that person? Huh? It's just doesn't make sense, right? But when you ask them, they're like, it's more easier. It's always in the same place. It's always have the same numbers on it from 1 to 10, from 1 to 9, from 0 to 9. And it's never going to go anywhere. We never lose it. It's always there. The reason they have not embraced the newer technology is simply because they are too comfortable with the old way of doing things. They have been taking care of business one way for a long time. That changing it to an entirely new way is not appealing. That is how Christians respond to a new way that God has made available for them. That is living by grace of God. You see, we live in a world that teaches us the value of hard work, the result of hard work. That whenever you work hard, you get, uh, let me see, okay. Whenever we, whenever we work hard, is that, is that working better? Let's see, praise the Lord. Technology. There we go. Let's, let's take that one off. There we go. Praise the Lord. Whenever we work hard, we get a result, good result. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in working hard. But that's not how grace of God works, right? The grace of, work, the grace of God is not based on our work. It's based on his work, what he has done. But we live in a world of consequences. What separates Christianity from other religion is that we operate in God's kingdom by his grace. It is not about what we can do for God, but what God has already done for us. Amen? Praise the Lord, somebody. That requires a major adjustment for most Christians. Rather than working to earn God's favor, we are to trust it is given to us freely and we don't deserve it but it is given to us freely that is roman 623 we want to make a right we always want to make a right we always want to balance our our bad deeds with the good deeds we're trying to fill up this tank of good deeds to be, be able to balance our bad deeds most people do if i be good enough god loves me that is false the grace of god is unconditional unconditional love you see, grace is about getting what we don't deserve. That's what grace is. And today we're going to talk about that. The grace of God is best shown in greatest gift ever given. Jesus Christ paid price for all our sin. His death on a cross. We no longer need to try to earn God's favor. He offered it to us freely. Wow, that is good news. That is good news, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, you guys are not excited about this. <laughs> this is good. This is good news. You know, whenever somebody offers me something free, I always love it. I was like, is, it, is there free food? I'm, I'll be there. <laughs> you guys got to be, be more excited. Grace of God is freely given to us. The old way of doing things was hardly effective. In the Old Testament, God gave the Jews a system of offering sacrifices accomplished through priests. This old covenant way was complicated, messy, and time-consuming. But even more than that, it was temporary. It was temporary. Animal sacrifices must be made, and burnt offering must be offered, and it must keep going on because it's only covered the sins for a season. But thank to God for this new covenant with Jesus Christ. 
that no longer we have to sacrifice animals. No longer we have to offer every day a burnt offering just to for, for forgiveness of our sin. But through the new covenant with Jesus, through that grace, living by grace, you're always accepted as sons and daughters. Thank God for new covenant. The new way releases us from having to try earn God's favor. Grace is about unconditional accepting his favor as a free gift. Our sin has been forgiven. Our eternal life is secure. God eagerly desires. Now, this one is, this one is good. God eagerly desires to fill our lives with blessing, protection from the spiritual wickedness. That is the grace of God. That is the grace of God to protect you from spiritual wickedness. Today, I want to encourage you in this message that let go of old way of doing things and embrace the new way of living under the grace. No more writing check at the grocery store. Huh? No more using your paper maps. Get a GPS out and get to destination quickly. So we finish on verse 14 last week. We're talking about grace. In chapter 6, verse 14, and he says that we talk about that grace of God is not leading us to sin, but leading us away from sin. We talk about how we are dead to sin. How we are dead to sin and no longer have sin nature. And verse 15 today, we're going to continue read from verse 15. So let's kind of go today verse by verse and, and see where the Lord take us. Verse 15, what then? Should we, should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Absolutely not. Paul says, absolutely not. Paul, as Paul speaks about grace the, and the new way of life, this Christian are thinking, thinking, thinking carnally, thinking fleshly, thinking, okay, so then so since we have grace, then let's go on sinning. Let's keep on sinning. And, you know, Paul is not there talking to them face to face. Paul is writing his letter from far away to Rome. And he knows what kind of people these people are. These are some carnal Christians. So he's thinking, as, 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 I'm like, grace of God is upon you. Your sins are forgiven. No more sin have authority over you. And he's thinking, oh, they're going to think that we can go and sin. So he right away addressed it and says, absolutely not. Should we sin more? Absolutely not. He shoots that idea down. Shoot that thoughts down. Grace means... Grace, that does not mean we can't go on sinning. Christ did not die for us so we can go and freely sin, right? Christ died for us so we can live freely without sin. It's a fundamental problem whenever the, the, the carnal Christians thinking that we, got, we can sin and there's no consequences. You're not operating under the grace of God, if you are keep sinning. Now, let's continue reading. One more thing about, about, about that grace. Grace of God makes the have-tos to want-tos. Whenever we have the grace of God, we are enabled to do things that we used to have to do. Them. For example, Pastor Timothy was talking about offering today. Before People have to give the 10% of every single thing. But today, we don't have to give that. We want to give that. We give 10% and even more. The standards are same, but motivation is different. The grace of God makes the motivation of obedience to keeping the law different. Grace makes the have-tos to get-tos. Now we're going to read from verse 16 to 18. Verse 16 to 18. Amen. Don't you know that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that one you obey, either of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. Verse 17. But thank God that Although you used to, used to be a slave of sin, you obeyed from heart that pattern of teaching you were transferred to. And 
having been liberated from sin, you have become enslaved to righteousness. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln famously proclaimed the Emancipation of Proclamation, freeing all slaves throughout the Confederacy. And even for years after that, some slaves, some slaves did not hear this, this, this news. This news kept secret. Last place was in Galveston, Texas. This news was still kept secret from them. So even though all African Americans were proclaimed free, they still were acting like slaves because they did not hear it, the, the, the news of freedom. But how foolish that is, how foolish it is for those of us who have heard the news of freedom to still say yes to sin. To still say yes, I'm in a slave of sin. I still am. Still sin controls my life. It is foolish to do that. It reminds me of the Israelites. You remember God Almighty, by his grace, lead the Israelites out of slavery. And that last year of slavery was bad. You remember? They were forced to work even harder than ever before. So Moses come, majesty. Come take them out with, with prize and possession. They get out of Israel. They get, they get out, of, out of Egypt. They go into promised land. And they're supposed to get there. They're traveling, getting out of that place of suffering and hardship where they were forced to kill their children, where they were forced to be a slave, but not too long after. Now, listen, they're having the cloud over their head, this shade. They're getting manna, this bread that's coming from heaven. They're getting water from the rocks, unheard of. Isn't it awesome? They're living in miracle every day. How many of us want to live in miracle? They're living in miracle every day. They're seeing God's goodness in their mouth, every, in their hand every day. But what happened? They did not decide to follow God. They were still foolish enough to want to go back to slavery. They choose to go back to Egypt. They choose to make idols for themselves. And none of them got to promised land. It is a serious problem whenever we know we are free, but still we choose to be in enslavement of sin and not choosing God and freedom. Grace. And, that's, that, and that is living by grace. Grace is love of God shown to unlovely. A peace of God given to the restless, the unmerited favor of God. Paul Zahig write this, grace is unconditional love toward, toward a person who does not deserve it. Grace is the unconditional love toward a person who do not deserve it. Loving somebody unconditionally who deserve it is hard. Right? Loving our spouse sometimes is hard. But imagine loving an enemy unconditionally. That is grace. Grace is the most, grace is most needed and best understood in the midst of sin, suffering, and brokenness. There is a point right there. Grace most understood and most needed in the midst of sin, suffering, and brokenness. Whenever people are suffering, whenever people are so low in their life, and you might relate to this. Maybe that's how you come to salvation. That's how I come to Christ. I got so low in my life that I needed and I understood the grace of God. Whenever I lost all my family, I lost all my everything. There was nothing left. The place of being zero over and over again. Whenever you are broken so hard that no one can heal. 
Remember, there's so much suffering that we just need some grace. And you know what? I believe we are in that time. This coronavirus, this the stuff that goes on around the United States, this stuff that goes on around the world, people are desperately in need of grace, and they want grace. God, everything is broken in me, and I need you. When people realize that they don't deserve nothing, those are the moments that we all, we will, we will be saved. Those are the moments that people get saved. They, they learn they don't deserve nothing. Have you heard somebody's testimony that they were in the best of their life and they felt like everything going perfect? I don't need, not, I don't, I don't need nothing. Everything is perfect. Every, everything is going well. I need Jesus. <laughs> that doesn't happen, right? People need grace whenever they are so low and realize they don't deserve nothing. Because to be honest, none of us deserve nothing. Bible teaches that we all deserve death. That's what we deserve. Whenever people come to the realization that we only deserve death, they are like, I need grace. I need unconditional love of God because I don't deserve it no matter what I do. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We live in a world of earning, deserving, and merit. And these result in judgment. And that's why everyone wants and needs grace. Judgment kills, and only grace makes alive. Judgment always kills. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're a son of God, it kills you. Judgment kills. That's why Jesus went on the cross and was judged for all of our sin. So we can have that amazing grace. But grace, but grace makes it alive. Judgment kills. And we live in that society of judgment, of earning and deserving and merit. And it's so hard for people to realize the concept of grace. That you don't have to pay for it. If you pay for it, it's not grace no more. You can't pay for it. Don't try to. Grace is opposite of karma, which is all about getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve and not getting what you deserve. That's what grace is. Karma, if you do good enough, well, you come back as something better. If you do good, if, if you be a good lizard, then you will turn to a dog. If you be a good dog, then you will become an American dog. <laughs> that you've been pet and being fed and, and people love you. So that's karma. It's all nonsense. Islam. In, in, in Islam, I used to be Muslim. In Islam, there is grace. But you know what? Islam has grace. However, the grace is not secure. Actually, all Islam is about grace. It's about Allah's grace. You have to do all these good things. And if you do all these things good even, you're not assured that you go to heaven. But in Jesus Christ, we have assurance. God says, I assure you, if you call my name, you shall be saved. That's the good news, people. Say, praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. Now let's continue with on verse 19 to 22. Verse 19 to 22. Paul continue writes to the Rome. I am using human analogy because of the weakness of your flesh. Notice, because, because the weakness of your flesh. For just as you offered the part of yourselves as a slaves to moral impurity and, and listen to this, and greater and greater lawlessness. 
which entwined greater and greater lawlessness. So now offer them as slaves to righteousness, which result in sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from allegiance to righteousness. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been liberated from sin, you have become a slave to God. And you, and a slave to God, you have your fruit, which result in sanctification. And the end is the eternal life. If we become in a slave to sin. Now, I know all of us here who are here at church, we are not sinners. We are perfect. But you who are at home, you sinners, <laughs> listen to this. You who didn't come to church today, maybe your last name was something, but who you who are enslaved into sin, you get some short-term pleasure. But that pleasure leads to death. And what kind of trade-off is that? What kind of trade-off is that? For some short-term pleasure, giving our life in enslavement to something that is sin. If, however, you become slave of God, you get sanctification and righteousness, which will lead to life. Amen? It will lead to life. Let's go verse by verse. Let's verse 19. Let's read that, let's read that together. Not together, but let's, you read it in your Bible, I read it loud. I am using a human analogy because of weakness of your flesh. For just as you offered the part of yourselves as slaves to moral impurity and greater and greater lawlessness, so now offer them as slaves to righteousness, which result in sanctification. This is amazing. God says the same part of your body that you used to use, for sin, for greater, and says greater lawlessness. Now use that same part for goodness, for righteousness. The same hand that used to used to sleep, used to go and steal something from somewhere, bring it here, help somebody out. Use it for righteousness. The same lips that used to do cursing, they used to say bad words, they used to give false testimony. I used to destroy lives, used to gossip, bring it here. I use it for worship, for praise. The same lips that used to kill now can give life. The same part of your body can give life. What does it mean? Let's continue on verse 20. For when you were a slave of sin, you were free from allegiance of righteousness. The kingdom says you are free from righteousness. What does it mean to be free from righteousness? You know, whenever I hear a uh, word freedom, whenever I learn English, I learn English not by translating the word by word to Farsi, but I just, because I couldn't, I didn't have a translator or n nor had the time to do that. So, so I just imagine what they mean. So whenever I hear word free, two pictures come to my mind. One is being getting things for free. Getting free food, getting free 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 gifts, getting I mean gifts is free, but getting like free stuff. That's what free when I, when I, when I think of free. That's that's what comes to my mind. Second thing that comes to my mind, free, is whenever there's a bird in the cage and it starts flying away. That's the other picture comes to my mind. Other picture comes to mind is a bird flying from the cage. But this free is neither of them. This free is like sugar free. It's like carb free. It have nothing. It's without. It's like a sugar free cheesecake. It says, you were free from righteousness. And that is so true. We were all free from righteousness. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. No one is good, not even one. Everyone, everyone 
were righteousness free. That's what they were. Everyone was sugar free. But now, imagine, now what grace has done. By grace of God, we who used to be free from righteousness without any, not even one righteousness. Now, God says, you are my righteousness. You are my chosen people. You are holy nation. God calls you righteousness. And not any calling his righteousness. That's amazing. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. You are God's righteousness. Next time you see yourself in the mirror, even if you look ugly in the morning, say, I am God's righteousness. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's read from verse 21 to 22. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death. But now, since you have been liberated from sin and have become a slave to God, you have your fruit which result in sanctification. And, and the end is eternal life. So what is the end? Why we have to be living by grace of God? What is the end point? It says the end point is eternal life. This life is temporary. Beloved, this life, this next 80 years is temporary. For some of you, maybe not 80, maybe like 10 more years or 20. I don't know. God willing. But this life is temporary. The end is eternal life with Jesus in heaven where we spend the rest of billion and trillion years in the presence of the Lord with the fellowship of brothers and sisters. That's the end. It's eternal life. We will all die, if not with coronavirus, with something else. But the end is in heaven, spending time with Father in his radiance, worshiping him. Like Jessica says, next to those people who say, holy, holy, you'll be there and singing with them. Holy, holy, you will be singing with them and praising God. And I heard, I heard this, I don't know from who, but I heard. There is a buffet in heaven. So when we get there, then we buffet. Might be not be true. I don't know. Verse 23. This verse. This verse was one of my favorite verses that I memorized. Whenever I memorize the verses, usually I just tell it to myself. I read it in the car, tell it to myself. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. This is the verse that good for sharing the gospel. If you haven't memorized this verse, I encourage you to memorize it. For the wages, the price, the result of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Michael Hurton writes, In grace, God gives nothing less than himself. Grace, then, is not a third thing or substance mediating between God and sinners. But grace is Jesus Christ's redeeming action. It's a redeeming action. Christ has redeemed you. It's redeeming action. Takes you out. He just snatched you out of the hand of enemy. Say, this is mine. This is my son. This is my daughter. He redeemed you forever. He paid the penalty. You know, redeeming and redemption. It's a very... Very good word. Whenever we go to grocery store, you pick up a bottle of water. And, and when you pick it up, you hasn't, if you haven't paid for it, you have not redeemed it yet. It's not yours. You pick it up, but you don't own it. 
Jesus died on the cross and went to hell. And he paid our penalty. He paid for our sin. We pick up that bottle of water. We go to the cashier. It still is not yours. Until that receipt come out of that thing, then it's yours. When that receipt come out, when you take the bottle out outside of the grocery store, you have redeemed the bottle of water. This is your bottle of water. And nobody can take it from you. You open it up and you drink it and you enjoy. Because you have redeemed the bottle of water. That's what Jesus did to you. He went to the depth of sin and death. And he died. And he paid for your sin. And he redeemed you. Grace is redeeming action of Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death. But free gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let me ask the worship band to come up. And we're going we're gonna to close with a, with a song today. But we learn, we learn in this last two-week series that we are living a new way of life. We are not living in the old style. We were one way, and now we are totally different. Say it with me. We are totally different. Oh, man, that was so weak. We are totally different. Say, we were one way, now we are totally different. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's good. It's good. We were one way before Christ. Now we are totally different. A different person live a different life. Doesn't live the same way. A new person embraced a new way. And the new way is living under grace. The new way is living dead to sin. That's the new way. And I encourage you, if you haven't lived a new way as a believer, today is time to live as a new way of life. Dead to sin, alive to Christ. And if you haven't been born again, today is your chance to be redeemed by Jesus Christ. If you haven't prayed, received Christ before, it's very easy. All you got to say, call upon his name, confess that you are a sinner, and ask him to come to your heart and be your Lord and Savior. So I want to pray with you that if you are at home, if you are here, if you haven't prayed, received Christ before, and haven't made him your personal Lord and Savior, today is the time. Today, Lord say, is the day of salvation. He wants to redeem you. So you haven't prayed that? I want you to bow your head. We're going to say a quick prayer. If somebody here wants to pray, come on up. And we pray together. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. Thank you for Jesus who died for my sin. I believe he died for my sin and you rose him again. Please, Holy Spirit, come to my heart. I want to make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And I want to pray a blessing over you who are at home, over you who are here to embrace a new way of life, walking in victory. Father, I pray for all people who are watching at home. Father, I pray for people who are here. Father, I pray that you, Father, speak loud to them, empower them to walk in truth, in love. Father, I pray that they draw near you. Father, I pray that we be able to renew our mind, to transform our, our life. Father, we praise you. We praise you for redeeming action of Jesus Christ. We praise you for the cross. We praise you for your goodness. Father, thank you for sending your son to die for us. Father, we accept that we are your righteousness. pray all this in Jesus' name. Now let's sing for the Lord. Let's sing a song and praise Him and worship Him. Stand up. Let's sing for Him. He is good.
Let's sing this to the Lord. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. He is great. Let's sing this together. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you can have a seat. Uh, we have a few announcements. And uh, after this announcement, we will sing again and praise the Lord together and worship Him. But I know there is a, there is a, a, a good, good weekend. We have this weekend coming up. But before that, Nation Church Houston update. Uh, the updates are still the same. We have uh, uh, Pastor Buddy today with us, but he's in the background. And uh, Brother Brad is still traveling. And let's pray for him. He's in Florida, so let's pray for him that he will not be affected with coronavirus. Because I know there's a hot spot in, 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 that, in that area. So let's pray for him. Uh, other than that, we are opening next Sunday for the people from A to N, I believe. A to N. If, you're, if, you, if your last name starts with A to N, come on on. Welcome to church. And don't be sinners. Don't stay at home. If you're not in danger, come to church. I'm just joking. Uh, next slide. Nation Church Houston Espanol at 12 o'clock if you speak Spanish. And if you know somebody who speaks Spanish, who wants to be in the Spanish service, invite them to 12 o'clock at Nation Church Houston Espanol. They have online service and I think in, in, in person perhaps. And it's going to be right here at 12 o'clock. So if you know somebody who speaks Spanish, invite them to that service. Next. Life groups, oh, this is going to be awesome, life group. In the, in, the month, in the month of August, we are joining all life group together. It's going to be awesome to have time of fellowship. I'm excited about that. Not this Friday, but Friday next, the next Friday. We'll be at some park or something. We're going to have a good time playing uh, some, some, maybe some sports, maybe some sit-down games and have some Bible study, some, some good time outside and have a picnic together. Is it this Friday? Oh, okay. Well, it is this Friday. I was con I was uh, I was rebuked that it is this Friday. So, <laughs> so hey, you better come this Friday. Otherwise, I get in trouble. So, you guys come this Friday. Uh, we will text you the location, the place that it will be, and uh, we will celebrate together the life group, all life group together. Next slide, please. Equip conference. This one is is this Saturday. Well, the. Okay, so I was right, folks. I was right. The life group is not this Friday. Life group is the next Friday. Oh my God! Yeah, it was, it was, it was all Jackie and Buddy's fault. Okay, I was doing it right. They can hear you, Buddy and Jackie. Just, just this Saturday, though. This Saturday is an awesome opportunity to learn about how to minister to others and how to 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 live a life uh, of of Christ. Uh, Equip conference is a great conference. Um, hosted by uh, Southern Baptist, and these are the, the uh, subjects that we will be studying online here. If you haven't paid for it, still you can come. Uh, just, just let us know if you're coming with a family or how many people are coming, and it's going to be right here. We're going to host it here in different rooms, so we're going to have social distancing. We will have masks and, and everything. Uh, just come and be equipped to share the gospel, to advance the kingdom of God. It's going to be an awesome conference. It is, it is a great opportunity to learn and be equipped to uh, share the gospel and advance the kingdom of God. So please let Buddy or, or uh, I or, pa or uh, somebody else, uh, so uh, Melanie know that you're going to come this um, Saturday for the Equip Conference, and we will let you come in, no problem. Next is if you need prayer. If you need prayer, if you have my number, text me. If you don't have my number, text Pastor Buddy. He is always praying for you. I know he's praying every day for all the church members and he shared, uh, he shared a prayer request, and, and, and if you want uh, the, your request to be shared with the staff, we will, we will be praying for it. The, his number is on the, uh, on the screen, so just text him your prayer request, and we will be praying for you. Next slide is the conference call, prayer time uh, today after the service. So after the service, be tuned in, and we're going we're gonna to pray together. Uh, wait for your leader group to uh, call you, and we will be praying all together and doing a quick fellowship through the phone. Well, today was an awesome service. I, th I believe it was pleasing to the Lord, and I'm so glad that we could gather together in person, also online, and worship the Lord. And you know, this is going to be a great week in Jesus. This is going to be an awesome week. So let's continue seeing and worship him, and we'll see you next week. Amen.
every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. 